The topic of this video is graphing transformation techniques, combining vertical and horizontal shifts. To combine vertical and horizontal shifts, simply make both changes to the equation and both changes to the coordinates at the same time. This is illustrated in the following example. Example, use translations to graph the function defined by p of x equals the square root of the difference x minus 3, subtract 2. Solution. The basic function for p of x equals the square root of x subtract 3 minus 2 is the square root function. It's the function that most closely resembles the function that we have been provided with. The transformation happens as follows. We start with the square root function, f of x equals the square root of x. Next, we replace the x with a pair of parentheses, and we change the name of the function to g. Next, we have to put an x subtract 3 in place of the parentheses, and we note that this represents a shift to the right three spaces, because we replaced with x subtract something. Finally, we put a subtract 2 on the outside of the square root, and change the name from g to p because we've changed the equation. The subtract 2 on the outside represents a shift down two spaces. Now, to the ordered pairs. To convert points from f of x into points for p of x, we have to remember what we are being asked to do. So, in this problem, it says x minus 3 subtract 2, and we've observed that this represents a shift to the right three spaces, and it represents a shift down two spaces. Remember that, right three, down two. So let's do the right three part first. Imagine you're this point right here at the origin and you move to the right. What happens to your x coordinate? Well, it goes up, one, two, three. So we're adding three to the x coordinates for a shift to the right. That's shown here. We're adding 3 to the x-coordinates for a shift to the right. Then, after we make the shift to the right, we want to go down two spaces. Well, down means the y-coordinates are getting smaller, and that's represented by subtraction. So each of the y-values from the point on the gray curve are going to have a subtract 2, and that will give us the new y values on the blue curve. So we now have a correspondence. The point 0, 0 will turn into the point 3, negative 2, because we are adding 3 to the x's and subtracting 2 from the y's. The point from the parent function 1, 1 will turn into the new point for negative 1 and the point from the parent function for 2 will turn into the point 7, 0. OK, putting it all together. When comparing a before and after, if the observed change is something added or subtracted, that transformation is a shift. This is important enough to repeat. I'm going to say it again. When you have two equations, one representing a before and another representing an after, if the change between the before and after is something being added or subtracted, then the transformation you're dealing with is a shift. In addition, you should pay attention to where the change happens. If the change is inside close to x, then the transformation you're dealing with is horizontal. But if the change is outside far from x, then the transformation you're dealing with is vertical. This brings us back to the questions we started with when we first began this topic, graphing transformation techniques. The function f of x equals x squared plus 1 is just the library function f of x equals x squared with a plus 1 after it. That change is outside far from x and therefore represents a vertical shift. Because vertical shifts behave as expected, that plus 1 represents a shift up. However, 
the function f of x equals x plus 1 squared is just the function f of x equals x squared with a plus 1 within it. That change is inside, close to x, and therefore represents a horizontal shift. Because horizontal shifts behave backwards of what we would expect, that plus 1 is actually a shift to the left. We're now ready to solve problems involving horizontal and vertical shifts.